Hey there, Jenna here. Welcome back to my channel where I feature unique and tiny home tours. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you a really cool school bus conversion that has everything you could ever need to live full-time on the road. This tiny home on wheels has a rooftop deck complete with a hefty solar system, a cozy interior with a wood stove and custom Dutch door, a clever solution to having a kitty litter box on the road, but my personal favorite is the artistic handmade shower. Make sure you stick around long enough in this video to see that one. So let's jump right in and take a tour. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Carrie. We're here at Stockton Pass at the base of the Pinalino Mountains, and this is our bus, Bussy McBusface. Welcome to the outside of Bussy McBus Face. This is a 1992 Bluebird All-American. It has a Caterpillar 3116 engine, Allison MT643 transmission. She gets about eight to nine miles to the gallon. Our bus is 40 feet long. It weighs in at 30,080 pounds. The engine on the bus is in the rear. We didn't have a say in that, but we're so thankful it was a rear engine bus just for the sake of the fact that when we go down the road, we can talk a normal conversational tone and it's not this overwhelming screaming engine right there to my right as I'm driving. So it's been really nice. This worked out good. We did the hitch on here at a professional shop and then I had a friend of mine who's a really talented welder weld an extension up on it so that we could put the bike rack on and it leans down just right so that we can open the rear hatch. But we also put our generator back here so that we could back up power when we don't have uh, additional electricity. We fashioned our own under storage here. This is kind of like where we keep our more dirty stuff. Pipe for the dumping station. In our bus, we have just a single gray slash black water tank. We actually divert our urine from our composting toilet into our tank. Those feed and can come out this pipe right here. I built a diverter in here where the water from the shower and from the wash machine go through a pipe and they reach a three-way valve. And I can either switch that valve to capture our gray water or I can have it come over to this, this guillotine valve here where it just exit and comes out here. Consider the ability to shunt your actual factual gray water to ground because that will extend your time when you're out here. The color of the bus was hotly contested. Vibrant Meadow is the green that we chose. We were really happy how this really turned out. You know, driving down the road, we get a lot of attention. People give a thumbs up. We upgraded our headlights to LED lights. We also have 360 degree security on this bus. Just to give you that extra peace of mind. So let's head up to my favorite spot, Margarita Deck. This gave us a place to mount all of our solar panels. So we have 1500 watts of solar back here. And we have our mini split air conditioning there. But the rest of the space is just for us to hang out with friends. And it's just been really, really nice having this giant area to come hang out with. You just see above all the stuff around you and you get a more intimate feeling from your landscape. One of the prime reasons we wanted this little antenna tower here is I just wanted to have a weather station. I'm nerdy like that. And I like to track the weather and know what's going on outside. We also wanted to have connectivity, and so we opted to have a WeBoost on our bus. And so initially it came with this antenna here. I got this antenna down here, which is a directional antenna, and that one really does provide a great deal of enhanced boosting of our cell phone signals. This is our doorbell. Carrie's idea here. And we searched forever to find this in thrift stores. Like it took months and months and months. 
So welcome to the inside of our bus. When we designed this space, we wanted to make it so that when you first step into the bus is the social area. So we have a full-size comfortable couch on one side. We weren't really sure how a full-size couch would fit in a bus, but it does. And we couldn't be happier with our choice because it really gives us a level of comfort that you just don't get from a wooden bench with a four inch foam cushion on it. And the dinette on the other side can actually also be converted into a couch for more guest seating or into a bed for overnight guests. One of my favorite parts of this whole bus build is this kitchen. I call it my gypsy caravan kitchen and I just love it. I have done more cooking and baking in the six months since we moved into this bus as in the whole past 10 years of my life. I actually love the fact that it's a small space, but that it's in the same space with the living room and the rest of the bus. I'm not isolated in the kitchen. I'm in the same room with Mike or anybody else and I can continue cooking or cleaning or whatever I need to do while I'm still socializing with whoever is in the bus. We designed our kitchen to have a lot of countertop space for kitchen prep work and we even added an additional cutting board that slides out. We also have a slide out trash that we can slide the scraps off the cutting board straight into the trash can. So here's some of the little techie gadgets that Mike loves to have on our bus. And this is one of my favorites. This is actually our subscriber counter for our YouTube channel. So every time we get another 100 subscribers, it makes a little R2D2 sound and we get notified. We chose to put in a full size double bay sink so I can wash dishes on one side and rinse in another or when we're traveling we can move everything off the countertops into the sink. And another one of my favorite features is that we built this draining rack right above the sink so the water drips off of our dishes back into the sink while they're drying. Another one of my favorite features in this kitchen is my double pantry with slide out shelves. So you can reach all of your items all the way to the back. Nothing ever gets lost or forgotten back there. Initially, we purchased a very expensive RV refrigerator, but it never worked right. So we ended up switching it out for this very low cost apartment fridge that has worked great for us. And our solar system has no problem running it. It has plenty enough space inside for all of our groceries. And we just use these child safety locks to keep the doors shut while we're traveling. We picked up this RV oven on Craigslist for 50 bucks and it works perfectly and it hasn't limited my cooking at all. Three burners on top is absolutely enough and the oven inside, even though it looks like such a small space, it fits a full nine by 13 pan and even a full size 11 by 17 cookie sheet. So I'm baking brownies and cookies and enchiladas and all the things I always love to bake. Our wood burning stove is the Dwarf 4K. And although it's not our only source of heat in the bus, it's our favorite. We also have two diesel heaters, but I'll tell you the difference we have found is that the diesel heaters will keep this bus warm as long as they're running. But as soon as you turn them off, you feel the cold temperature again. Whereas when you build a fire in the wood burning stove, even after the fire has burned out, the warmth still radiates from this area long afterwards. Underneath the wood burning stove is our kitty zone. We have a cat in the bus. And so on this side is her little kitty bed. And then she can pass through a kitty door over to the other side. And this is where we keep her kitty litter. So for changing the litter, we can just slide it out like this. And there's also an exhaust fan in the back of this area so that all smells are vented outside the bus. So we never have any kitty litter smell in our bus. Something you don't see in every bus build is a door separating the front of the bus from the back of the bus. But we did this for several reasons. One of them being that I have insomnia and we have to keep the cat out of the bedroom while I try to sleep at night. And also because Mike is a paramedic and sometimes he works all night on a 24 hour shift and comes home the next day and he needs to sleep and have some quiet in the back bedroom while I'm still out here in the front of the bus. And the other reason is for climbing climate control, we only have to heat or cool one half of the bus at a time instead of the whole bus. 
Eventually, we will be adding a stained glass window, but the coolest feature is that it's a Dutch door, so we can have one half of the door open while the other half is shut, which allows for cool air or warm air to pass through if we want it to. This is my broken dish mosaic shower. I was actually inspired by a lady on YouTube who is doing a broken tile mosaic in her shower, and I thought, I want to do that but I wanted to make mine an ocean and sky scene. And so when I looked for tile, I couldn't find ceramic tile in the colors I was looking for. So I ended up using plates from thrift stores and I broke them into pieces and tiled the entire shower with broken dishes. Almost everything in this shower was actually inspired by my real life. So for example, we went swimming with turtles on the Virgin Islands and that's where the turtle came from and the coral reef was inspired by snorkeling on that same trip. There's also actually a miniature school bus which was inspired by the cartoon The Magic School Bus, which my kids watched when they were little. And the hot air balloon actually comes from a time I lived on a ranch, and one morning a whole bunch of hot air balloons were coming up the valley, and one of them actually landed, picked me up, and took me for a ride. It was completely random. At first, we thought we would install an actual flushing RV toilet, but it just didn't make sense with how much water they use, so we decided to use a composting toilet instead. This is the Airhead composting toilet, and we like this design the best because there's an actual toilet seat, and other composting toilets don't have that. You'll notice in the front of the toilet that we plumbed our number one down into our black water tank, and number two obviously goes in the composting tank in the back. We are 100% happy with our choice to go with a composting toilet because of how much water it saves, and we're boondocking almost all the time, so it's perfect for us. We just brought our full-size washing machine from our house into the bus with us. Sometimes we put up a clothesline and hang our clothes out to dry. Other times we wash in the bus and go to a laundromat to dry them. One of my priorities for the bedroom space was having enough elbow room to change my clothes without nailing my funny bone. <laughs> so we made sure there was plenty of space in between our matching his and her closets. Inside each closet, we have room for hanging clothes on one side and then shelves with cubbies on the other side. And behind each cubby is another cubby so we can keep our seasonal clothes out of the way or towards the front. Underneath each closet, we have double drawers that are super wide and super deep so they hold a lot of clothes. We have a queen size bed here in our little bed nook and we're very happy with the size. However, if we had it to do over again, we would put in a king size bed simply so each of us could crawl in our own side of the bed instead of having to crawl over each other. One of the most brilliant features in our bedroom are these awesome pocket windows, which slide open and shut. So you can either open them to allow a breeze through or shut them to shut out the light or the sound so you can have absolute privacy in your bedroom. And last but not least, we can open up this huge window in the back of our bus that lets in an incredible amount of airflow. We ended up falling into this bus. It was happenstance. We had a friend who was interested in an old truck that we had that was broken down in our yard and he kept wanting to get that truck from us. So he called Mike and was asking, what is it gonna take for me to get that truck from you? And Mike said, how about if we trade for that bus that's in your yard? Next morning, like phone call, I'm on my way over. And he lives a mile away and I'm in my underwear. And here he comes, like right down our tiny little driveway over to our house pulls this massive thing. I can only imagine what the neighbors thought. Like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. That's how our project began. I think there was a shock value of like, wow, we got a bus. Then when you walk in there, you're like, okay, blank slate. This is going to be a big job. And I was excited. Carrie was a little dubious at the time. I was actually really concerned whether this lifestyle was going to work out for me because I have really severe complex PTSD from childhood trauma. I have so many symptoms that I'm struggling with all the time and I didn't know if this nomadic lifestyle was gonna work for me. I have been pleasantly surprised 
by how well it has worked out because so many things in this bus mic built specifically for my needs and i think that's the beauty of it when you're doing a build like this you can build for whatever your needs and desires are like we did for us we originally thought we would build this bus for fifteen thousand dollars we spent sixty thousand dollars we're not planning on just living in this bus for a year while we travel around. We're planning on living in this bus for, and we don't even really know what period of time. So we wanted to make sure we were comfortable with enough room for everything. If I had one thing to say that I wanted everybody to hear when they have met us and left this bus, I want them to realize that this is totally attainable. If you think that moving into a bus or a van or going in this lifestyle is gonna be awesome, you're right. But what it's not gonna do is change who you are. All the problems you have are coming with you. You have to change that in you. You will not regret making that decision. Thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next week with another tiny house or unique home tour.